what should one do to score 99th percentile plus in IP mat exam? And so 99th percentile is a, is a good score. Uh, how should you, what should you do to have that in mind? I'm going to go bit by bit. I'm going to think about quant first, then VRC, then the overall paper. And what should you do for quant? For quant, the, the key thing that's very often students miss out on is question selection. And so you, you're, you're living in this world, especially those of you who are after class 12, where you look at pay questions and you go, look, I need to get this right. You're used to getting 95 out of 100, used to aiming for 99 out of 100, used to not leaving anything. Picking and choosing your battles is very crucial. This is particularly applicable for the ones who've been preparing for JE and the like. So you're comfortable with the uh, trigonometry and, and, and quadratic equations and you, you want to know how to differentiate and make life easier for yourself with that toolkit. You're very happy doing functions and combinatorics. So sometimes the mind gravitates towards these topics. There could be absolute freebies sitting in percentages and profit and loss and simple interest, compound interest. So make sure you pick those up. In a, in a typical paper, about one third are general easy topic marks and easy topics. And so this is a topic that standard eight, standard nine students can attack and get right. You should get them right because for each question, the mark is same. So very often, the challenge or the thrill of the tougher topic appeals too much and we get suckered into it. So be very wary of that. Pick and choose your battle. Have a list of topics that you simply should not leave. Attack them. The question is tough and tricky. You still leave it. It's all right. Don't get, get into an ego battle with it. But, but look out for the simpler topics. Don't go question by question. The question selection mantra is super crucial for quant. For verbal, what, what is it? The big topic in verbal is reading comprehension. When you're doing reading comprehension, especially those who don't have too much practice, you just have taken a couple of marks and you're ready for it. The temptation is to read and register and retain and hold on and do it intensely and quickly. So you're worried about retention, you're worried about speed. And both of these make the deeper understanding uh, kaput, go kaput. In the sense that there's no, uh, uh, just reading pleasantly at your own natural speed makes you internalize some ideas way better than rushing through and trying to retake. So whenever you're not really comfortable, when it comes to reading, our speed goes up higher from than our natural speed. So it's like reading, trying to read really quickly, re end up trying to read really quickly, end up succeeding in reading quickly, but not registering much. So tone of the passage, the, the voice or the, or the style the author is using, these are things that you can register only if you're reading the passage at your own natural speed. If you're continuously manic about registering and, and, and manic about reading quickly, then that goes kaput. Read slowly, register. The reading speed is not going to be a determining factor for cracking this exam. At an overall level, what should you keep in mind? In an exam context, there's adrenaline, there's anxiety. And you need to tamp down anxiety, but keep adrenaline high. Very often I've found students uh, saying, look, I need, I shouldn't be anxious, I shouldn't be anxious, I should take everything calm, quiet, I should take everything in my stride. And then they become, uh, they operate at 80%. That can't work. You need to go bang, 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 bang. You need to be amped up. You need to be fully intent and switched on. You can't be calm yourself and, and dull yourself down. That can't happen. And so, so you have to start at an, an amazing clip. Get carried away with the thrill of solving question after question. Not worry too much about, hey, where am I headed? What am I doing? Uh, how well, can, where will this take me? Will I have a chance at it? What are my chances? None of that. C question, try question. I mean, very similar to what Virendra Sevag used to do. See ball, hit ball. If it is there to be hit, hit it. If it is not there to be hit, still hit it. Find a way. And so you should be have an element of curiosity and, and fun and joy at tackling questions about you. Amp up the adrenaline going. The anxiety part especially sometimes creeps in when you're not doing well. When, when something goes awry, where you've tried for three minutes and not got an answer. Where you read a passage for five minutes, but you don't have a handle on it. That happens. That happens to the very best. That's all right. So let, let account for the fact that everything's not going to go super smooth. That's all right. Very often what we do, we end up paying a double price for it. We, we, we try to attempt a question, miss out on it, then go to the next question and the question after that. But about 30% of our brain is still mulling over something. I think I missed something. Should I go and try it again? Is was there something simple that I missed? Is there a sitter sitting there? Why, why am I not able to solve a question on function time? The, big daddy of function. So this is background track that's still two stops behind, whereas you have moved on to the next question and that is where big price are paid. Very often some errors in judgment happens and you leave a question or you try and not get a question. That's all right. All of that is fine. But hanging on to it and paying a price twice over, that is what you need to count on. And that is what, that is where your mocks come into picture. And so keep that in mind. Amp up adrenaline, 
clamp down this anxiety make sure that you draw a line okay miss that big deal i'll attack the next one have that attitude and things should be fine best wishes for your exam